Hey guys, Joe Pye here with Advanced Innovations. Welcome back. Got to start by saying thank you to everybody that continues to subscribe, thumbs up, comments. Love it. Anyway, one of the comments that I received recently was, hey, how about a walk around of the engine lathe that you use? And I figured, why not? It's only going to be a couple of minutes. So uh, let's take a walk over to the engine lathe, take a look at how it's set up. You might get something out of it and see something you like and you can use in your shop. So let's take a walk over and check it out. Okay, the only way to successfully do a walk around is to actually walk around with the camera. So I will try to hold this as steady as possible and not make anybody sick. We can start uh, with a general description of the machine. It's an engine lathe. It's a 1340, I believe. Uh, 13 inch being the maximum diameter piece they recommend that you hold and 40 inches would be the uh, max distance between centers. I keep all my tools over here on the shelf that I built hanging from my chip shield, splash guard. My collets are mounted to the back of the machine as well and in sequential order of size. But the rack, part of this rack that probably sees the most use is the eighth inch incremental on the end. Naturally everything else is available, but uh, it seems that stock sizes are the ones that get hit the most. All the safety, security, eccentric collets are kept up top. I do occasionally take a sharpie marker and write on my slide here so that as I'm turning something when I see the line appear I look for the number on my dial and I know that I'm getting close. It certainly beats uh, any other method that I found other than a digital. Speaking of which the digital I have is strictly uh, longitudinal, and I believe on a lathe it's a z-axis, but uh, this one says x for some reason. It's incremental and absolute. It does not have tool offsets, so if you've asked me for uh, explanation of tool offsets with a digital, I'm just going to have to guess, and this is the best guess here because I've never used one with tool offsets, that each tool that you use has a specific tool position, and you can zero the tool based on what tool you're using. So I would say, as you change your tool, change to the tool that is uh, set up in that particular offset. The top of my machine is never very cluttered. I do have a small cup here for worn out inserts, wrench for uh, tool post height adjustment, two different files, one key for the tool holders, one key for the parting tools. And if you've watched some of my videos, you know what this little guy is for, it's when that dastardly nut spins on the Aloris uh, holders that jams it up. Sharpie marker, that's about it. The speed range on this machine is quick. It is color coordinated so you really can't miss when it comes time to dial in a specific speed. You know exactly where you are. Most of the graphics on the front of the machine are very well represented and you really don't need to speak any specific language to know exactly uh, what you're looking at here. This machine is capable of cutting metric threads but it does require a 56 tooth gear to be swapped out inside the head here. It is a 5C quick change closer on this machine. Works very well. Up here in the front is the receiver features for the cam chuck and when you take the 5C closer off you just stick a bar in here and you knock this little guy out and the chuck slaps right on there. And somebody said to me once before, what is this? Any oils or lubricants that get on the collar pinwheel out and this just catches it so I don't end up with a racing stripe on my shirt. If you're a lathe operator, chances are you know what that racing stripe looks like. This is my support cart. This is where I keep my chucks, my tools, my keys, my steady rest, my soft jaws, uh, lesser used tools. There are some threading tools back here, some insert tools, some larger body tools that I don't use very often, but I will keep them on top of this. Sometimes I want to put something between centers. I don't want to take the chuck off. I'll just stick a center like this in the chuck and redress the angle and off we go. It's a really quick fix. These are my drill chucks, and this is a collar that sticks in the spindle that would normally take a hard center for turning between centers. And one thing I've noticed that if you're going to use a chuck, 
uh, at least on this machine, that you can leave this in the head when you put the chuck on because it sits right down in this little uh, relief in the back of the chuck. So I made this little guy here, it's just a tapered slug with a thread in it, and inside the machine, you know, sometimes you just got to have a positive stop on a three-jaw chuck, and that works very well. So, little hint for you if you want to try to make something like that. It's a rather uh, mild angle, but I'll bet you can find a video on how to set your compound to precision angles. I'm just saying. Steady rest, this guy's going to get a workout pretty soon. We're getting a lot of activity on the comment sections about how to successfully set these up. And I'll tell you, there's a lot of different ways to set these things up, and only one of them is going to yield any kind of good result. So stay tuned, and we're going to put that steady rest in this machine probably in the next two, three videos and show you what's going on. The lower shelf here is just chaos. We have saw blades, face plates, driver plates. Uh, more nose cones and in this box right here we have a variety of adapters for my live center for small holes big holes delicate materials I keep a bunch of these things around and it's nice to just grab it and go this I'd like to show you because we're probably going to get a kick out of this this is some eccentric turning that we've done over the years that is a solid piece and it was turned right here on this lathe. Pretty cool, huh? Naturally, that's done in an eccentric collet. And the part is indexed as the tool is moved and it's plunged. And you work from the end in, or it would just bounce and boing all over the place. And this was actually done with a parting tool. Anyway. Got the world's smallest crankshaft in here as well. Just playing around one day, I decided to see how far you could go with an eccentric collet. And you can get fairly creative with eccentric collets. Alright, got machine shields in here. I have uh, carriage stops. I have a three phase motor for this machine. Now, if you have a home shop, one of the things you're going to be confronted with is hey, this might be a three phase machine, but believe it or not, the closing machine can be swapped around to run single phase so the guys up at closing were nice enough to talk me through how to rewire the panel here so that I could run this single phase because this used to be in the garage of my house before I had this shop back of the machine is no frills we have a four ganger socket here one for the light one for the digital readout I keep this shelf here for my emery for my oiler for my scotch bright and these are also keys for the panel also fit a fireplace gas key auxiliary airlock jack and this is the incoming air nothing fancy around the back of the machine the machine is sitting up on one inch thick uh, vibration mounts down here this took a lot of the vibration out of the machine and it gave me much better surface finish, believe it or not. It really did. Uh, I had this machine down on the ground before, and it just translated right through the chassis of the machine and showed up in my parts. The collet rack you can see is inch and a quarter, quarter inch, 90-degree uh, angle stock. Simply bolted to the splash guard. And that's about it, guys. I really don't have much else to show you. This is my machine. This is the beast that does all my work if it's any bigger I send it out and uh, smaller the better I like small stuff and uh, naturally if I have something really gigantic maybe I'll get a bomb to do it so Adam if you're watching uh, you're on my list buddy you do some really huge stuff and wow uh, it's a little bigger than I'm comfortable with these days but been there done that okay that's all I got hey guys while I have your attention I'd like to share a little safety secret or safety tip with you that I've adhered to for many years and just very much like the center punch mark on the compound that I showed in the other video for adjusting the compound at precision angles I center punch my chucks too actually I use a small chisel and I put a reference line in them if you've ever been confronted with a job where you're 
opening up your three jaw, your six jaw chuck, and you just wonder, man, how much further can I go before these jaws actually are not engaged with the scroll anymore? Well, that's something you should know because if you turn that machine on and uh, two of the three or five of the six jaws are engaged and one isn't, it's going to come out of there like a hockey puck. So let me show you what I do. Right here on the face of my chuck, you can see a small index mark. At least I hope you can see that. When that particular section of my jaw is in line with that index mark, I have about two turns of the chuck key left before this jaw comes out first. Now this is jaw number three, and although it doesn't matter what slot these jaws are in, provided they're installed one, two, and three, I always put my jaws back in the same slot they came out of just out of habit. So provided your jaws are in the location that they're intended to be in, take your number three jaw or your number six jaw, since it's going to be the first jaw to pop out when you're unloosening your chuck, and find your, find your danger zone and move the jaw in about an eighth of an inch and then smash a line into the face of your chuck, engrave it, whatever. But Put that safety line on there, it's a good thing to have. All right, well having a quick visual reference like that and knowing that you're not gonna take a hard jaw in the teeth when you fire up your machine, it's a really good idea. Only takes a minute, it's a good thing to have. All right, well I hope that was uh, somewhat informative. It was not very technical. I like the shelf idea, I like the rack idea. And usually if I had my choice, my air hose would be hanging from the top of my machine on a spring so that as I'm working on the machine I can just reach out grab it and do the air and just put it back on the hook had a machine set up like that one time absolutely loved it anyway I welcome your comments feedback if you like what you just saw give me a thumbs up subscribe and until I see you again Joe Pye Advanced Innovations Austin Texas I'm out <laughs>